Battlefield 2042. I've already made a video about its disastrous launch, and there were so many issues to cover that I almost couldn't fit the sources in my description. I almost ran out of space. That's how bad it was. That's how many Reddit posts there were pointing out myriad issues and concerns and just making fun of this game that launched badly enough that on Metacritic right now you'll see the PC version which has the most ratings from both critics and users alike. I mean, you can see the scores for yourself. 2.3 the score is from users and then from critics, from 43 critic reviews, uh, 73%, which I'm surprised it's actually that high given all the issues surrounding this game. But it's not necessarily the most ideal of scores. It's still middling by critic standards. Even Battlefield 5, which had a rough launch, people say launched better than Battlefield 2042. And it was bad enough that on Steam, you're going to see a review score of mostly negative from over 30,000 reviews, sitting at a mere 26% positive reviews. That is among the lowest we've seen in the series. I don't think it, it's gone that low for other entries, actually. Like even Battlefield 5, looking at it now, you can see a review score that isn't the highest at 70%, but it's mostly positive. Battlefield 2042... It's going to take a while for that game to catch up a lot of fixes before people take their thumbs down and shift into a thumbs up and enough positive reviews flood in to change this mostly negative score. And scrolling down, you'll find one particular review that's been mass upvoted that kind of summarizes things, what people feel about this game. First up, been a part of the Battlefield community since Battlefield 2, 2142, or I think they meant to say 1942 here. Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, and Battlefield 5 have watched this franchise grow and fall hard during Battlefield 5, but then made it up for the issues by giving their all through the uh, Pacific Storm update before getting sent to the firing line for the development of Battlefield 2042. Recall that just as things were picking up for Battlefield 5, development for that game was cut short, which was a shame. A letdown for me, I don't know what to feel when I play this game, Battlefield 2042. I know it's Battlefield, but it feels off. Movement feels cottish, like it's snappy and fast. In an odd way, it's not as smooth as it was in Battlefield 5. Hell, Battlefield 5 actually polished up movement, and it felt more realistic for me. It's immersive. Performance is terrible, and this has been an across-the-board complaint with memes like how Battlefield 2042 should actually be called Battlefield 20 to 42 frames per second. I'm getting inconsistent frame rates of 45 to 55 frames per second, especially on the main game mode of 2042 All Out Warfare. Rubber banding, GPU bottleneck, a lot of issues, really. The update that they released helped a lot for many, but not on my end. Battlefield Portal runs better and is a lot more fun. And yeah, generally people say the one saving grace of Battlefield 2042 is the portal mode and just how flexible the customization options are. There's a lot of polished up features that were removed that made Battlefield Battlefield. I don't want to list out because you guys can just find it on the net and I'll get to that in a bit. Audio mixing is bad, it's too quiet, it doesn't pump my blood out like how the older titles did. I can go on and on and on but that's for another day. To you lot who've been with Battlefield for a long time, 2042 is a no-go. There's so much features removed that it's been polished up by Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 that it makes 2042 feel off. That's a sentiment that I've seen a lot. 2042 feels like a regression from past entries, even some of the older ones, which is just crazy given that we're in 2021 now and people expected, you know, 10 years after Battlefield 3, imagining how cool Battlefield would be, only to find out now that it's, you know, among the worst entries, among the worst launches for the title or for the series. An identity crisis, Apex COD Battlefield, I don't know, and that's another complaint where people feel like mechanics of Battlefield have been made to be different with the intention of chasing trends that are becoming popular or make it more Apex Legends or COD Warzone-like when that's just not what the identity of Battlefield is. To those of you who is pretty new to the franchise, just hop on to Battlefield 4, 1, and 5. I can guarantee you that you'll save money and have a much more fun time than what 2042 is offering at the moment. As for me, I'll keep this game in my library. I'll see through this game for you boys. I'm taking a shot for y'all. Damn, this review is all over the place, just like 2042's entire core gameplay Adios. I guess you never know how much the game could improve over the course of months and years, but as with 
any situation like this, people didn't pay for this game so they could have the game that they were meant to have at launch. Months and years down the line, they bought the game to have the most ideal experience at launch. And it's baffling that even though EA took an off year with Battlefield, where they gave this game an extra year of development, still somehow it launched this rough. And it was apparent during the beta that this game was in dire need of a delay, and just about everyone who played recommended EA on a near universal level that they delay this game and just launch this properly but EA does what EA does and at the expense of customers and the integrity of the game and its potential they ship the game so that they can meet those financial quotas and this is the result I hope it was worth it for you EA and your degrading reputation and the degrading reputation of Battlefield as a whole. The current Steam review score of 26% of mostly negative, it's bad enough that, as reported by Forbes here, Battlefield 2042 has actually entered Steam's top 10 worst reviewed games of all time. And this is true. There's actually a website dedicated to keeping track of that, and eFootball continues to be on number one. Great job, Konami. Here's your crown. But... If you scroll down here, you'll see that currently, or as of the last time this website was updated, Battlefield 2042 was number 8 on the list. This is a game so negatively reviewed that it beat out freaking Goddess in the top 10 list of worst games on Steam, which is... You know, that's an achievement right there. It just goes to highlight that people are fed up with the frustration of a Battlefield launch for once in recent memory. They'd like to see a Battlefield game just launch with all of the polish and all of the content and all of the features that can be expected from a proper Battlefield game. But it just feels like it's been forever since that's happened. And I understand just the mounting frustration and how with each battlefield it seems to get worse and worse reviewed in large part because it feels like each battlefield launch is getting worse and worse with many deeming 2042 to be the worst launch for battlefield yet which just freaking sucks that finally brings us to this reddit post i'll put a link in the description below if you just wanted to read this for yourself but i'm gonna go through this to really emphasize how much is missing from here over 22,000 upvotes and scrolling down you can see that the ratio of positive reviews for this post is at 96 percent which suggests that the majority of the community agrees and has experienced this so core features that are missing or are bugged out no single player story campaign mode and if you're gonna have a purely multiplayer game then that multiplayer mode better be stellar but the fact that the multiplayer launched the way it did, and on top of that, there is no single-player campaign mode to distract players while the multiplayer gets fixed, is a damn bummer. No standard server browser, fewer standardized game modes, can't even play team deathmatch or smaller scale modes without relying on community servers, really? No standard hardcore mode, no persistent lobby, seriously, why do I have to matchmake after every round? That almost sounds like a Nintendo online infrastructure, they're always behind on that stuff. The fact that there's no persistent lobbies is kind of strange. Fewer in-game assignments, no class system, going more for a specialist system. That, again, leans more into Overwatch or Apex and whatnot. Less character customization options than Battlefield 5. No profile progress stats page in the menu. No battle log stats tracker for other players. And just generally a lack of information that the game offers. There's no scoreboard even, which is crazy. No global leaderboards, no dog tags, they still sort of exist, I guess. No custom emblems, no cross game profile screen, no spectator mode, no permanent community servers would be useful for clans and events, no central US servers, no test range. Then down to infantry gameplay boots on the ground gameplay, fewer guns than ever before, which I brought up previously. Generally, the amount of content is not satisfactory in 2042. Fewer infantry gadgets, no manual leaning. You can't do this, you can't lean from side to side to pull off some sneaky shots, which is a trademark of Battlefield. No diving while swimming. You know, one of the modes of escape is, you know, diving in the water when you're getting shot at and you're near a body of water. That's no longer possible. No high wall vaulting is sort of a basic feature that I, I can't believe didn't make it. No crouch sprinting. No backwards prone, really? No explosion knockback, no rolling after falling from heights, no ammo or health pickups off teammates, no scope zeroing, no tiered reloads, pause reloads, no melee weapon choices, no thermal optics, no indirect fire gadgets, less anti-tank launchers, come on man, only one? You know, actually going and reading through this, 
Uh, it, it's it's even worse than I imagined. No lock on launchers. The M5 works with the soft lamb, but that requires two people. No AP mines or claymores. There's no mines or claymores. There's so many plays you can do with mines and claymores. Setting traps for players and vehicles. You name it. No suppression mechanic. This one I don't mind, but I'm including everything. No first person takedown animations. Whether well, there's a downgrade is up for debate, but I think it is. Basically, in Battlefield 2042, it's the camera shifts to a third person perspective, but traditional Battlefield players enjoy that more immersive, cinematic, first person takedown animations that would happen in past games that are just not present here. As for missing features for vehicles, fewer vehicle types, again, just a lack of content in this game, no naval vehicles, no vehicle gunner direction indicator, no lock on direction indicator, no unoccupied seat indicator on friendly vehicles. Again, an important point to emphasize is just the general lack of information that Battlefield offers to players. Stuff that was there in past games. No vehicle enter-exit animations. Just little attention to detail stuff that adds to the immersion factor. All that stuff's missing. No tank turret decoupling. Less vehicle driver pilot customization options. No tank zoom customization. No tank gunner customization. No heli gunner secondary weapons. No separate heli fixed wing controls. No rocket aiming reticle for helicopters. No control input while looking behind, free looking in aircraft. Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 pilots. This one is going to absolutely suck for you guys. So once again, missing features from past games. A regression from past games. No joystick non-generic gamepad support. General consent it seems to be that the helicopter and fixed wing flight models are a step down from Battlefield 2042. No behemoths. And then more missing information, particularly where scoring is concerned. No squad wipe scoring, no player damage points, no vehicle damage points, no vehicle kill assist points, no headshot bonus, no long range kill bonus, no assist counts as kill bonus, no multi kill bonus, basically no rewards for pulling off cool stuff, no rewards for playing Battlefield and being creative, no multi count bonus, no kill streak stop bonus, no comeback bonus, no squad objective play bonus, oversimplified team play scoring. Just a reduction of rewarding elements that keep players pushing themselves to be better. Squad and teamwork have generally been mocked up to the point where it's just very difficult to actually coordinate with other team members. No commander, no special squad call abilities, no squad field upgrades, no in-game uh, VOIP, though it's coming soon. The fact that there's no voice chat at, at launch is a major red flag and an indicator that this competitive first-person shooter game where communication is integral should have been delayed. Fewer factions, no cross-team chat, no team changing, no create new squad option, no self prod mod to squad lead using request order, no clans, platoons, no view of squad mates while the spawn screen, the no medic incoming, no rank names, icons, just a number. Basically the whole squad system that people enjoyed from past Battlefield games has been completely butchered. Then there are maps which are larger to compensate for the 128 players count, but just missing certain features and certain aspects of interactivity that just don't make them as compelling as they could be. Lack of persistent servers means poor map rotation, fewer base game maps, no static weapon emplacements, fewer destructible buildings, and just the lack of destructibility and how poorly that's simulated is something that I highlighted in my previous video through a number of Reddit posts that showed videos of this. Very poor balance between vehicle and infantry gameplay, no infantry focused maps, no game changing levolution, absolutely zero cover between capture zones, poor spawn points constantly spawning in the open and visible to enemies, which leads you to getting killed immediately after getting spawned. No fortification building, given how open all the maps are. This could have been super useful, and this was a feature from past games that would have been a welcome addition here. Somehow didn't make it. You know, with each new entry, it's supposed to be additive for a franchise like this that's annualized or biannualized. It's supposed to build upon stuff instead of, you know, stripping aspects of the foundation and creating this rocky structure. Fewer urban areas, no naval maps, then onto UI and just general quality of life, and UI in particular has been slammed by players. Less control customization options, less UI customization options, no HUD icon opacity customization, no HUD scaling customization, no gun sight radical customization, no network performance graph, no individual player scoreboard, no ability to zoom in on the spawn map, less detail on the who killed you screen, less ultra wide monitor support, HUD ratios locked in at 16 by 9. Seriously? With first-person shooters like these, which are supposed to be vast and immersive, a lot of people like to play an ultra-widescreen, and the fact that it doesn't support that, I mean, 
Again, red flag for a necessity to delay. Very poor friend joining system, poor console aim assist, no in-game crossplay toggle option. Basically, less ways for players to tweak the HUD and the UI how they want, and just generally missing information. And last but not least for audio, general consensus is that the audio design is bad, especially compared to both Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 1. 3D soundscape is almost non-existent, less impactful soundtrack, end of round music is dull and uninteresting, end of round voice lines are just so tone deaf and awful I can't describe how much I hate them. And yeah, I've taken a listen to some of those and they're pretty bad. There are a couple examples here on this Game Rant article and you can listen for yourself. That was something. Why are they treating war like it's laser tag, like it's this cool, fun event you get to do with your friends? Yeah, uh, why do these soldiers sound like how a kid imagines being in a war is like? This guy sounds like he's excited to be traumatized by warfare. And here we have another example. Oh, you know, I think I pulled something back there. Well, 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 that was fun. Ha, I told you. <laughs> oh my god. It, it it's yeah, it just sounds like these soldiers think they're in Fortnite or something. It's super strange with these quips are not humorous or not endearing. They're just annoying and poorly written. But yeah, this is just stuff that's been either removed or downgraded from previous games in 2042. This doesn't even cover the myriad bugs, issues, technical issues, lack of polish that I've already covered in my last video. So again, be sure to check that out if you haven't done so yet. But yeah, uh, this is the state of Battlefield 2042. And I'd say this mostly negative review score here of 26% and this making it to the top 10 worst reviewed games of all time on Steam is well deserved given that this should have been an upgrade across the board from previous entries especially with that extra year that EA took and even if that extra year didn't prove to be enough they should have taken another year off if that's what it took to get this game up to par this is what it feels like it feels like this game should have been out in 2022 not 2021 but EA does again what EA does don't really give a shit about quality just care about Marking this game to be the biggest thing since sliced cheese, putting it out there, having people spend their money so that they can tout to the investors how much money they made this quarter, all the while essentially conning customers with uh, a game, a product that is broken, that is not ready, that is not what people really paid for, and people have to wait months and years to get the actual game that they paid for. And even then, who knows? Development for this game might be cut short, like how it was with Battlefield 5, so the future is just uncertain. Whatever roadmap is in place, no doubt, will get severely delayed because they're going to be so focused on trying to fix the fundamentals and the foundation that are broken or downgraded in many respects. It's just a whole mess and a half. So, yeah, that's kind of everything you need to know about the latest developments surrounding Battlefield 2042 and the really awful user review scores it's garnered and even critic review scores are the lowest we've seen in a while for Battlefield. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on all of this and what your experience has been like playing Battlefield 2042. And look, if you're having fun with this game, that's great. But acknowledging these issues is important because even though there is clearly a fun game underneath all the rubble, they clearly screwed up with the launch. This clearly should have been delayed, and that's worth highlighting because we don't want to normalize this kind of launch. So again, if you're having fun, that's great, but that doesn't mean this stuff is acceptable, right? They're not mutually exclusive things. But yeah, share your thoughts below, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.